Hello and welcome back to Silica Valley. My name is Andy Wilson. Today I have three cocktails for you which are simple to make but look and taste amazing for your guests. There's only three or four ingredients in each and all of them include a visual element to impress your guests. Now the three cocktails are a French martini, a classic espresso martini and a Moscow mule. We're going to begin with the French martini. Now, the French martini is super simple to make. You just need vodka, pineapple juice, and chambord. Um, until learning about this delicious cocktail, I'd mostly used chambord, adding it to a glass of champagne or prosecco. It's kind of a raspberry-flavored liqueur uh, with blackberry, blackcurrant, Madagascan vanilla, and cognac. Now, I've never tasted it neat, so I'm gonna give that a try now. We'll get the chambord. There it is, um, and uh, I just need a glass. So let's see how this tastes, shall we? Um, it's uh, sixteen and a half percent is the uh, is the alcohol content. So just give that a little pour in there. Whoops, just a little, a little touch. Right. So um, to look at, it's very um, pale. Uh, raspberry sort of colour. Um, oh wow, the smell. <laughs> that's really, that's quite inviting. That's very full of fruits of the forest sort of smells. I can smell quite a lot of alcohol in there, so despite the fact it's only 16.5%, let's have a taste. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's really pleasant. All of that fruits of the forest flavor, the blackberry, the black currant, and so on, strong taste of raspberry in there. But actually the, the combination of the sort of vanilla note and the alcohol together gives a really pleasing background as well. That's really, really unusual. I think that I'll probably be adding that to um, other types of things. That'd be really nice poured with ice cream, for example. Um, so yeah, that's delicious. Right, let's make our cocktail. So French, co uh, French martini, uh, we're going to make it in a, in a shaker. You're going to need a shaker. You don't have to have like a posh cocktail shaker. To be honest, most people these days have got a, um, like a, a, a portable drinking flask of some kind, something long, which you can put ice in and there's plenty of travel. That's what you get from the shaker when these two things are combined. Look at that distance there. So what's happening inside the shaker is the ice is being thrown back and forth, back and forth, and it's really agitating the liquid that's in there, cooling it down, uh, but also really agitating it. And that's the reason why you use a shaker rather than a stirrer. So first I'm going to add some ice. You don't want to add too much ice, a couple of scoops. Should be enough to get the action going. Um, and start adding ingredients. Now, uh, where's my measuring vessel? Uh, first we'll have 40 millilitres of vodka. I noticed on uh, one of my videos the other day that I keep pouring these the wrong way. <laughs> I don't seem to be able to get a handle on doing it the right way. That's the correct way, right, though? Anyway, uh, so we'll pour that in there. That can go back. Uh, next, we'll put the chambord. There's my lovely chambord. And it's 20 millilitres of that. Pop that in there as well. And finally, the uh, pineapple juice. Um, and you're gonna want 60 millilitres of that. You can add more than 60 millilitres of pineapple juice and simply make a weaker drink, which is very, very nice and perfectly acceptable way to do it. If you do that in one of these shakers, just be aware that 
the amount of liquid that's in here will influence how good and effective that agitation is. So really, you know, maybe add the pineapple juice afterward rather than during the shake. Um, so we'll add 60 millilitres of pineapple juice. Pop that in there. Well, that's all our ingredients. Three ingredients. It couldn't be simpler, really, could it? Uh, now, with the shaker, there's a bit of technique involved. Um, we're going to join the two together, and you end up with that kind of a look. Um, but the, um, the key here is that the smaller one fits into the bigger one and forms a seal inside. That seal, so just give it a tap to make that happen, but that seal is further reinforced because we've got ice in here and we've got air in here. The ice is going to cool the air and the air is going to contract. So there's an extra effect going on there to assist with the seal. So first thing I'll do is just give it a first shake, make sure there's plenty of cold going on in there. And you can see already condensation is forming on that top one, even though I've just shaken it the once. And now we're going to give it a right good shake. Uh, put as much travel into the shake as you possibly can. Okay. How long should you shake it for? Well, until your hands hurt from the cold. <laughs> That's, what, that's the way I do it anyway. Again, you can see a lovely condensation all over the shaker there. So uh, we're going to pour it into a glass. I'm going to use a coupe glass for this. Uh, which looks like that. And we also need a strainer. Because we don't want the ice that's in there. So first I'll take the top off. You do that by just giving it a slap. Get rid of the small one. And next, we simply pour. I'm using a Hawthorne strainer. Simply pour. Actually, I'll do it down here so you can get a good look at it. So the first visual element is the shaking. And the second visual element you can see is because we've agitated that pineapple juice, what pineapple juice does is start frothing up. And so we end up not only with a beautifully chilled drink, uh, but also we get a nice froth on the top as well. That is a delicious French martini. Now I'm going to give it a taste, but first a garnish. Um, and of course, we should have some pineapple in this garnish. Where's my pineapple? So I think we'll just take a small wedge of pineapple. It's quite a delicate looking drink, so we don't want to overwhelm it with the garnish. Um, and I'm going to marry that with a maraschino cherry. Now you've all seen the toxic looking red glacé cherries, which are <laughs> delicious by the way, I really like them. Uh, these are also cherries, but these are in a delicious syrup um, and they just look really impressive. The syrup actually, actually starts bleeding into the drink, which looks fantastic. So let's see if we can spear one of these. Okay, so I've got that loaded. I'm just going to push it all the way to the top of the cocktail stick so that it sits on top of the drink. And pull that out of the way. And just pop. Pop it on the top there. Lovely. A delicious French martini. Easy peasy. Let's give it a little taste. Yeah, 
absolutely gorgeous taste of pineapple. You can taste the Chambord, um, but it's not the direct taste. It's the way it modifies the flavor of the, um, of the pineapple, really. Vodka's fairly tasteless, so it's not doing much to that, but um, yeah. So the strong tastes are the pineapple and the, uh, and the Chambord. Pineapple being modified by the Chambord, and of course, um, the visual elements of the shaking and of the froth. So that's cocktail one. Number two is also a shaken martini, and this is the classic espresso martini. The backstory for this particular drink is really quite impressive. Reportedly, a future supermodel walked up to bartender Dick Bradsell in the Soho Brasserie and asked for a drink which would wake me up and fuck me up. Uh, it's rumoured that this was Kate Moss. And Dick Bradsell reportedly invented the drink completely on the fly. It was originally named the Vodka Espresso, then it was called the Pharmaceutical Stimulant, and finally it escaped Dick Bradsell and became known as the Espresso Martini in the 80s, because in the 80s, Martini was too catchy a name to ignore. Um, it's really simple to make if you have access to fresh espresso and a shaker. The ingredients are vodka, Kahlua, or you can also use Tia Maria, simple syrup, and um, a double shot of fresh espresso. The espresso here is really important. It needs to be as fresh as possible. My coffee machine here is old, but still delivers a fresh espresso on demand. If you don't have that, you can get some from your local coffee shop and maybe store it in the fridge for later. But the rule is, fresher is better. Certain chemical changes happen in uh, espresso when you leave it. Okay, well, first thing I'm gonna do is put my, uh, get my espressos brewing. Okay, well, they're brewing away. Um, that's a double shot of fresh espresso. Um, let's have a look at the uh, vodka. It's vodka as normal. Um, we're also adding, we're going to use Kahlua, uh, but as I say, you can easily use Tia Maria instead. Um, and the other ingredient than the espresso is the uh, simple syrup. Now, I bought this a while ago. Um, I didn't really need to because with a simple syrup, all you need to do is take um, 500 grams of sugar, uh, just plain white granulated sugar, um, and 500 milliliters of water, boil it all up, and then cool it down once all of the sugar has dissolved. Then you've got your simple syrup. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio from with sugar and water. Um, so I'll, I'll never buy this again, but there's quite a bit left as you can see. Now, again, we're gonna use our Boston shaker. And the first thing to do is to load it up with ice. Um, and then add our ingredients. Um, the ratios are a double shot of vodka, so that's about 60 milliliters. See if I can get the spout the right way around this time. Uh, so 60 milliliters, uh, sorry, yes, 60 milliliters of vodka. Uh, that's about two ounces. Um, half an ounce of the Kahlua or the coffee liqueur that you're using. Uh, so half an ounce of that. Half an ounce of the sugar syrup. The sugar does make a big difference to this drink. Um, it, it helps the bitterness of the espresso. So half an ounce of that, which is just about 15 milliliters. Uh, that's all of those ingredients. And now we just need to add the espresso and shake. So I've got a double shot of espresso here. There we go.
Ready? One shake, and now we really shake. There we go. Take off the small one. And what better than a martini glass? Hawthorne strainer again. And pour. So again, we have the visual element of shaking. There's also the use of espresso, which can seem unusual as an, as an ingredient. But you can easily see the froth beginning to form on top of the drink. Very nice. A final flourish for the espresso martini, which is classic, is to add three coffee beans to the top. And there we have a classic espresso martini. Lovely. Should we have a taste? Hmm. I do love an espresso martini. My wife Carol's a big fan of them as well. So far we've got a French martini, we've got an espresso martini. Both of these drinks have taken, would take less than two minutes to prepare. And in both cases, you could probably do two of each. Uh, you could probably do two alongside each other if you had two shakers. Okay, that's the espresso martini. Finally, the third one, let's make a Moscow Mule. This was invented in 1941 in Manhattan by a Smirnoff vodka distributor and a ginger beer manufacturer called Cock and Bull. They came up with it, but it didn't really find its feet as the Moscow Mule. But much later, a bartender called Wes Price at Morgan's Bar, he was checking his inventory in the cellar. He found lots of vodka and lots of ginger beer, so kind of put a special on and revived it. At some point in the future, some uh, another Smirnoff rep started getting bar staff to pose with a particular type of cup. And that became the definitive way to serve the drink. And uh, he was taking Polaroids of bar staff who were holding these metal cups, usually made out of copper. Um, so that became sort of the definitive Moscow Mule mug. Now, when you buy these, not any old cup will do because it has to have a food safe interior. Uh, especially if it's made from copper on the outside, because copper will leach into the drink due to the acidic nature of the drink. Um, so, okay, let's make a Moscow Mule. This is very straightforward, uh, but super impressive visually. Already we've got the cup. That's a visual element, isn't it? So um, first, three quarter fill the vessel. with ice. Next, add your vodka. That's uh, 60 ounces, the double shot. The, uh, sorry, 60 milliliters <laughs> or two ounces, the double shot. Okay, 60 milliliters of that. Next, the lime juice. And it's one ounce of lime juice. And finally, we're going to add some ginger beer. Just choose your favorite brand. I don't think it, off, it makes a huge difference what brand it is. Um, it's a very cold drink. So as long as it's got that sort of fiery aspect to the ginger beer, that's great. So I'm going to top this off to about 70% uh, full. And I'm going to give it a good stir. Now what I'm doing, I'm stirring it now because when we finish this drink off, it's going to be full to the brim and that's going to be a bit trickier to stir. So I'll do it now. And the main reason we're stirring it is simply to, in, uh, to reduce the temperature of the vessel, which hopefully you can now see is forming condensation. 
and that's another important aspect of the of the visual okay so I've given that a good stir now we'll top it up with ice and then finally top it with some more ginger beer until it's full No need for any more ginger beer. That looks good. Um, so we don't need to stir it. Uh, we just need to garnish it. I'm going to give it a simple slice of lime. I'm just going to cut it really, really as thin as I dare, really. Sometimes like this that you recognise the value of a nice sharp knife. And there we have it. That is a Moscow Mule. Look at all the condensation on there. It looks fantastic. It tastes really refreshing. I would normally finalise this drink with a metal straw, metal reusable straw. Pop it in there. And there we have a Moscow Mule, the third of our simple to make yet visually impressive cocktails. Let's have a little taste. Oh, I love a Moscow Mule. All right, well, that's it for today. Three simple cocktails, each of which should take no longer than maybe uh, two or maybe three minutes in the case of the espresso martini to make. Very quick, few ingredients, lots of flair with the shaking and a presentational element to each one. Uh, good luck. I'd love to hear how you get on in the comments below. Thanks very much indeed for watching Silica Valley and we'll see you next time. Next, we'll start adding our ingredients. So we start with a double shot of, uh, of vodka, 60 millilitres of that, or two ounces. Okay. Um, I'm going to get my espresso brewing. You not have an espresso machine at home uh, in fact it's likely that you don't um, so if you can't obtain brand new fresh espresso which is the best for this particular drink then uh, I'd suggest that um, if you the fuck am I talking about what the actual fuck am I talking about you wanker the fuck is going on here? Ah, uh, it's going down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> fucking hell! This is a fucking disaster. I can't get anything right. So what I just did was not only did I start talking about an espresso martini in the middle of a. Uh, of a Moscow mule, but I'd already added the uh, vodka to the ice. And then because I'm going to remake it now, I've put the ice back in the ice bucket with the vodka. So that, that's got a load of vodka in it. Oh my God. <laughs>